the most impressionable person. No, you are. Ah, uh, you're right. I am too impressionable. Oh, darn it. I did it again. YouTube guru said that I have to keep you engaged at the beginning of the video to keep engagement up. So I, have, of course, have to listen to them and do a Mr. Beast style intro or else you will get bored and leave. <laughs> oh god, I hated that. Okay, back to whatever we were doing before. <laughs> I'm so impressionable that I've been gaslit by my friends so often that I've lost count and that's only the times I've realized I've been gaslit. And But my favorite example of this is my friend Rico uh, from a past contract I did. So basically, when we were in Dubai, I wanted to find some granola bars, because they're the best snacks by far, and there's nothing you can do to change my mind on that. But I couldn't find any, and I had looked literally everywhere. Well, mainly the mall, because that's really the only place I could go in Dubai. But yes, there was none. So I was complaining about it in the dressing room one day, and Rico informed me that they were actually only available in Canada. <laughs> can you believe it? You shouldn't, because it's not true. Just to really drive home how dumb I was, the only credibility I had to this statement is that Rico had also been to Canada for some circus-related schooling, but he lives in Mexico, so obviously that means he's much more well-traveled than I was. And he also made me realize that nobody else in the cast, who uh, was primarily from the UK, were ever seen eating granola bars. I know, that's a sad life to live, no granola bars. Whew, very sad. But, because of this, I believed him for a literal month. One month! <laughs> 30 days I went and found my sweet, delicious granola bars. All because of an offhand comment that Rico made. Like, gosh. And the only reason I actually figured it out was because I accidentally stumbled across some in a grocery store. And, like, I brought them to him being like, Yo, look, they actually imported them. And uh, then he was like, You know, I was joking, right? They, they are, in fact, an international food. And, um, I guess, if anything, it, it made for some great inside jokes. Uh, for the rest of the contract, and also it taught me to never trust people ever again. So impressionability doesn't just mean that I'm easily gaslit, it also means that I'm easily inspired. And I did a bit of an, a deep dive on that in my last video, but seriously, I do get inspired by everything I, I watch or experience in, in one way or another. And while that's a good thing, it's also incredibly annoying because like I'll never have time to actually make everything or let alone the resources to make everything. So do I just put everything on the back burner until everything lines up perfectly to make it? Probably not. I do think it's important to just like try things. Like, for example, this trick right here. It kind of worked. <laughs> uh, but seriously, like, I always have fallback plans whenever I do try a new thing. Like, for example, when I went to mechanical engineering college, that was fun. Um, I did that for three reasons. Number one, uh, everyone told me that college was the right step after high school. And number two, that I had an internalized fear that juggling was not a real job. Uh, but turns out I was very wrong, thank God. Whew. Uh, number three, I, I was like very inspired by like Mythbusters, Adam Savage, the and also like the William Osmond and Michael Reeves type of YouTubers, and just the idea of just being able to build things that you want to make. It's really cool. But um, boy, was I wrong in thinking mechanical engineering would actually lead me on that path, because mechanical engineering is or at least the schooling for it, is designed towards building highly specialized industrial machinery parts, and that's not what I wanted to do. If anything, I wanted to make silly robots, or funny robots, or robots, or or even movie models, things like that. Like, that's more ar ar architect -y. But you get the point. Like, like any good juggler, I dropped out of that one. I remember realizing one day when I was driving the 45 minutes it took to get to school. Okay, I know that sounds like a, we had to walk uphill both ways in a snowstorm to get to school stories, but it's true, it was 45 minutes. Uh, here, here's Google, uh, Google Maps to confirm. Hey Google, how long does it take to get to Okanagan College? You are 8,399 kilometers away. Right? I forgot I'm in Italy right now. Um, hey Google, how long does it take to get to Okanagan College from home? It is a 45-minute drive to Okanagan College from home. Thank you, Google. So anyway, You're as welcome, I was, Evan. Uh, so anyway, as I was saying, I realized that I was spending so much time studying for school, driving to school, being at school, that I didn't have time to juggle or perform anymore. So that was a flaw because engineering was supposed to be the backup plan. I know how backwards that sounds, but it's true. Um, <laughs> oh well, but. I have a better backup plan now. Essentially, if making my own stuff doesn't work, I will run away and join the circus again. 
or at least in other words, uh, have, have another circus contract for a different company that's not run by me. So yeah, I've learned that it's important to have a fallback plan if your plan doesn't work. But if you're in a position to make something creative that you want to make that um, might also be lucrative, do it! Just do it! Make your dreams... Don't let your dreams be dream... How does that go? Don't let Don't your dreams let your be dreams. dreams. <laughs> dreams. <laughs> but be careful, because if you plan too much for the backup plan, you'll never do the, the non-backup plan. Just do it! And that wasn't the plan. So my new plan between backup plans and non-backup plans is to plan to distribute my time between all the plans and uh, consistently check in to see how the plan is planning on helping me towards my next goal. So for example, if I want to start selling my own shows, like solo shows, that means I would have to make my own solo shows or material. And if I'm constantly spending my time applying or preparing for long-term circus contracts, I wouldn't necessarily be working on my own stuff. Like, you see the problem here? It's, it's really hard to have both. Contracts are great, but they don't guarantee that you'll be working on your own act or material, or even practicing the skills you need to be an independent performer. Like right now I'm not working on my busking or street performing skills at all, and that is a huge part of what I do uh, when I'm not on a contract. <laughs> and all the other little things that help you be a better independent performer, that's someone else's job on a contract. And so really all I do is juggling. <laughs> and despite my name being Evan the Juggler, I do a lot more than juggling. And I like to perform a lot more than juggling. And I have a lot of plans that involve a lot more than juggling. <laughs> that sounds ominous. It's great, I promise. It'll be fine. So to keep on top of street performing, since that was my example, and also one of the main things I can't do right now that I really want to do, um, what I do to keep on top of them is I go through my routines every once in a while, just so I don't get too rusty. And what I also do, since, uh, again, I can't perform, what I do is I start writing new material or designing new acts. and. I also spend my time drawing cute cats, like, uh, got this one here, it's pretty cute. Or, uh, this one here, I draw that one last night, it's adorable. Or even we've got this one here, I named that one Gerald. Uh, and uh, these ones' names are both, uh, Hannah. And, of course, my favorite cat, the screaming cat. So yeah, now that I'm almost in a position to start actually performing my own material again, it's time to start my next project. A comedy magic act. Now, I've been inspired by Penn & Teller pretty much my entire life. And I've recently found a really good act done by Veronin on YouTube, which I will link in the description. Speaking of which, I have a playlist called My Favorite Juggling-ish Videos, which has like all of the acts of juggling, magic, comedy that have inspired me recently. So go check it out if you want to see some funny stuff, or cool stuff, or creative stuff. But yes, I've already started working on the magic act, and as you can see, step one, I've already got my outfit picked out. Very magical, if I do say so myself. And of course, this act, you could say it'll involve a lot of magicianing around, because there most certainly will be no clowning around- Oh my god. Oh my god. Will be no clowning around- Oh my gosh. Well, that could have gone better. Jeez Louise. Alright, well, sorry about that. There definitely won't be any mistakes like that in the sh- Whoa! Oh, come on, I said no clowning! This is definitely my favorite prop in the show so far, the- Magical Clown Pants, and they were made by my great friend, Sophia Felina, uh, who you should go follow on Instagram. Say hi, Sophia. Hello. Now, I did help a little bit in the making of the clown pants, but uh, Sophia was the genius behind the design, because she's been performing and designing quick change acts for over nine years now. So thank you so much, Sophia, for making my act a little bit closer to a reality, even if it made me look like a bit of a clown. This is a very serious magic act. I'm not even juggling in it. Like, magic! Like, oh. Uh, the juggling balls follow me everywhere. It's ridiculous. Although it kind of looks like a clown nose if you hold it right, doesn't it? Oh, look at me, Evan's a clown again, hardy har har. Come on, this is a serious magic act, I'm telling you- oh. <sighs> Thanks for watching, uh, keep your eye out for more updates on the Magician to Clown Act, and of course, stay creative, my friends. Ciao! Oh, my legs hurt. <laughs> that was so much more effort than I thought it would be. Hey! Oh, I got rid of it! <laughs>